Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Happening right now, goods are once again flowing in and out of East and Gulf Coast ports. That's after the International Longshoremen's Association reached a tentative deal with the United States Maritime Alliance, ending the three-day strike. John Lawrence has the latest on the deal. We're very excited to be back. It will once again be smooth sailing at the U.S. ports along the East and Gulf Coasts. Dock workers are going back to work. P.O.P. People of the profit. Less than a week after the walk-off started, the International Longshoremen's Association and the U.S. Maritime Alliance issued a joint statement Thursday saying a tentative deal has been reached. The union agreed to extend its contract with the Maritime Alliance to January 15th after it expired Monday. The agreement includes an annual $4 per hour raise for the six-year contract. It means that they can, they can provide, put food on the table, pay their bills. They don't have to worry anymore, possibly losing their cars or their homes or anything like that. An outstanding issue, according to the statement, is restrictions regarding the use of fully automated equipment in the workplace. Robots don't pay taxes and they don't put food on your table, so it's very important to protect these jobs. President Joe Biden released a statement applauding the tentative agreement, saying, quote, collective bargaining works and it is critical to building a stronger economy from the middle out and the bottom up. Next 90 days, we're going to settle everything. The tentative deal still needs to be completed and ratified by ILA rank and file members before it's set in stone. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The end of the walkout is welcome news for many agriculture groups. Ag Day's Michelle Rook joins me. Michelle, some ag exports were severely impacted by the strike. Yeah, that's right, Clinton. Dairy groups, including the National Milk Producers Federation and the U.S. Dairy Export Council, say $1.7 billion in dairy exports flow through the East and Gulf Coast ports each year. So the three-day work stoppage caused disruptions throughout the export supply chain and resulted in canceled sales. Plus, there was additional time and cost to reroute products, and they weren't alone. The temporary end of the work stoppage that shut down East and Gulf Coast ports is good news for U.S. agriculture. There will continue to be some disruption while the backlog is worked through. It had grown to 59 ships as of Thursday morning, according to data firm Everstream Analytics, and they were carrying hundreds of thousands of containers. Officials with the U.S. Meat Export Federation say the agreement was essential for livestock producers and exporters who ship more than $100 million worth of product through those ports each week. We see this as very good news, uh, getting people back to work, uh, starting cargo moving again out of the uh, Gulf and East Coast is essential to our business. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, you know, we're very, uh, uh, very excited about these developments. The strike was already causing some export sales to be canceled, but it also hurts vital export relationships. I think the uh, importance of this is that uh, you know, we have a reputation globally as being a very reliable supplier to our customers all over the world. So in that regard, uh, you know, getting getting people back to work at these ports and getting cargo moving again is essential. And uh, so in that regard, it's very good news in, in being able to continue to, to supply our customers. So a transportation coalition officials also welcomed the news, saying it's never a good time to have a port strike, but it was even more unfortunate given the nation's current economic challenges and the devastation of Hurricane Helene. I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Day.